What's going on everyone? So I'm going to change it up a little bit today. Um, I've decided that I've wanted a, a Nintendo Switch. So a couple weeks back I bought a Nintendo Switch and that is here. I didn't just buy a Nintendo Switch, I bought a broken one. So the one that I purchased initially, this guy here, um, was claimed on eBay to not be working. It basically just said, does not power on, blah, 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 but it came with a dock and it came with some Joy-Cons. These two, uh, actually the Joy-Cons that are on this unit right here. Um, these two came with this one. I'll get into that in a second. So this one, um, I took it apart and I just started probing around, watching some YouTube videos, some other guys that are doing some uh, um, Nintendo Switch stuff. And to me, what it looked like was the, um, let me grab something to poke with here. The This board here appeared to be shorted out. So what I did was I probed each of these different uh, capacitors. I found one, this one here was shorted out, which is fairly common. Um, so if we switch to the back side, I started probing around here. Each of these was bad. So what I did was I pulled this unit off here, this micro board. Um, and the uh, issue went away. I tried using a new um, uh, micro board and it still had a, a short. So there's something else going on in this board. Basically I chalked it up as a loss, but I learned a lot along the way. And now I have some extra parts that I can use to potentially fix others. Um, this one I think has a good battery. Uh, you know, it came with the Joy-Cons. It's got a good screen, a good case, everything, you know. So I, I got those things out of it. This one has the stand, whereas this one, which I'll get into, does not. Um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do with these. Maybe I'll maybe I'll lose money. Who knows? But uh, um, ultimately, I want to be able to fix these enough to buy a Switch for free, you know, make enough money where I, I don't have to pay for one because I've actually um, never played one of these before. So interestingly enough, I've been purchasing these. This one, um, this next one here that I bought on eBay, came with the Joy-Cons and the Switch. It works, but there's no sound. And we're gonna find out if this thing plays sound through uh, the speakers here, maybe they listed it wrong, or um, if it plays through a dock. So we'll dock it to my TV, see if it works, um, and then we'll try and figure out what's wrong with it. So we'll open her up and we'll dive into it. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, so here we go. Um, I've been charging it for a little while. The uh, Joy-Cons, these were came with the, uh, the console, the one that I was not able to fix. Um, so I've had these plugged in to charge them up. They seem to be uh, holding a charge, I think. I'm not really 100% sure how these things work, to be honest with you, because I've never used one again. Uh, but we'll find out. They seem to be making lights, which I would assume is good. So that side's good. That side's doing something too, so that seems good. Um, this one is missing the stand, which I do have on the other console, so we'll have to get that replaced at some point, but for now we'll just go through it. Um, I'm charging it slow right now at one amp. Uh, it's probably not even enough to power this thing up really, but I just wanted to make sure that it charged properly. It says that this is supposed to have 2.6 amps. Um, so I'll change that up. We'll throw it on 2.6 amps. Okay, she's charging, that's good. Uh, let's power on. Okay, straight away, press the power button, it turns on. <clears throat> Console's charging, that's good. Okay, so it's not making any sounds, we can tell. Um, For whatever reason, that Joy-Con is not working. It's, oh, it's registered though. Okay, so we got that, that's kind of weird. It wants to scroll all the way to the right. Okay, that doesn't seem to be working. That's kind of weird. Okay, that one works. Um, there's a way to do a test of the Joy-Cons. Let's see if we can figure that out. Let's go to controllers. No, let's go to settings. 
do, 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 do. controllers and sensors. Test input devices. Test controller buttons. Okay. Oh, those are a little squishy. It uh, maybe could be potential a little bit of damage from some liquid. Okay, everything seems to be working. I don't know. Maybe the joysticks are a little fuzzy inside. We'll have to take those apart at some point. Um, right now, I'm going to focus on the console itself. So we have no sound. Um, if I take change the volume level, nothing's happening. Um, let's go plug into the TV and see what happens. Okay. So it's turned on. Hmm. Doesn't like that AC adapter. It says could not connect to TV, please supply your AC adapter. Well, I have other things to try. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, it does not want to play using this adapter. So we will not use that. We'll have to procure an adapter of course there's always you always have to have an adapter for everything there's an adapter for your life i have to adapt my life to getting adapters i think what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart and see if there's anything obvious why it wouldn't be playing sound um, if we can't find anything obvious then we will buy a power adapter and revisit this once we have Verified that the audio from the TV does not work also. I don't want to, you know, be chasing ghosts here. So we're going to turn her off and we're going to break into it. Okay. I got this nice iFixit toolkit here. This is their full deal. Um, I also bought a soldering station. A rework station came with a nice iron as well as an SMD gun, heat gun, which actually works really well, works really well. Uh, different, bunch of different tips for the soldering irons. Um, I've used this. I think I'm fairly confident with it at this point. I've only used it like twice, so I can't really say that, but we're going to just send it. We're going to go for it. So the mistake I made with the first one was not using a tri-wing. Um, I was able to get them out, but I destroyed them, which was stupid. And I was just being impatient. So this time, I actually have the right tools. So we're going to use a tri-wing. I believe it's actually a... We'll try the double zero and see if that works. Yes, indeed it does. Very well, actually. Wow, that's so nice. Is put my fasteners in there. Um, the one thing that you should be doing when you're doing this is to understand and remember where each of the fasteners go. I know the tri-wings go on the outside, that's obvious, but... Once I get into it, I'm going to have to devise a method of keeping each of the fasteners uh, organized so that I don't forget which ones go where. Um, we got one here. That is a Phillips. Okay. Um, pop this. Nothing there. So from here, we have two on the sides, one on this side in the middle. Oop. You don't want to lose these, they're tiny. Thankfully if I do I have some spares now that I have a destroyed console, that doesn't work. Okay, so from here we should be able to pop this off. No we can't. Ha! There's two under here. As I said, I'm not that familiar with these yet. I've only done one. So as I break more, 
uh, he will be able to remember which fasteners are where. Okay, now we should be able to pop the case off. Yep, there we go. Pull that. Did I forget one? Uh, it appears I have. All right, already a bunch of different size fasteners. So I'm not going to remember where they go. Okay, we're in. First thing I notice is it's very dusty. Doesn't appear like there's any water in here. This is a, you can see a polycarbonate ABS blend, PC plus ABS. Um, you got a little mark here. Looks like maybe somebody signed off on it. A7, I don't know what that means, but interesting markings on the inside of this for where the, the tooling was. These guys here, you got your ejector pins on these here. A little bit of a uh, tool and die experience in my background here. So I'm, I like looking at this kind of stuff, injection molding. Now it looks like replacing this is going to be pretty easy too. There's a couple of screws there. So we'll get to that. That's a PAGF55, PA. I'll have to look up what PA is. It's PA6 is glass is a nylon. Well, actually, no, this is a nylon. It's just not a 66 nylon. So it's a glass fiber, 55%. Okay. So we'll put that off to the side. Um, so there's the volume buttons right there. Everything appears to be intact. There's no screws missing. So nobody's tampered with this one. That's good news. So let's go ahead and pull out all the silver screws. Silver screws, for my uh, documentation purposes, go on the silver casing. So um, I will put those on here, on that, just so I remember it. Okay, so this, that kind of just picks up off there. Just a little quick connector. Place that in there. We will also pull that off for time being. Looks like we got all the fasteners undone. So let's carefully undo that. Okay, we're in. Watermark, no water, that's good. Speakers. Speakers are plugged in. That's unfortunate. So that's our first loss. Okay. So now what we have to try and understand is why are the speakers not working? I assume there's a chip on here that's controlling the sound. So because I don't see anything right off the bat, I mean, everything looks to be connected. There's no damage. I don't see any water marks or anything anywhere. Like it doesn't look like this thing was, it doesn't look like there's any damage is what I'm saying. So I guess the first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to check these pins to just to see if there's any voltage going to these at all. So let's turn it on. DC, but we'll put it on AC DC because we're rocking out. All right, so this is going to be kind of tough. Okay, so these are connected. We can play with these buttons while we, after we get these popped on there. So nothing. And I, I mean, full disclosure, I don't expect to see anything here. Um, I just, you never know. And I would, I would expect it to make noise now, but again, it's possible that it doesn't. Millivolts. Millivolts. 
three millivolts. Okay. So we got nothing there. All right, well, let's go ahead and shut it off. Um, turning off. All right. So let's pop this board out. Um, I want to take a look underneath and see where these traces go on here. Maybe we can pinpoint um, one of the boards that controls sound and we can better understand what it is we need to try and do because at this point everything looks okay. I can't see any issues. So um, maybe before I do that, I'm going to just do a quick Google. So I don't know if you're going to be able to hear that, but so I plugged in headphones. I have sound coming through the headphones. So that's good news. Whoa. Okay. All right. Great. That is great news. So that means that means that the sound card, whatever is controlling the sound, I assume there's some sort of a microchip, if you will, that controls the sound. That means that that item is working. So it's just whatever is my assumption. I mean, maybe the maybe the output from here isn't working either when it plugs into the dock, into the into the TV. My assumption is just the amplifier that controls the sound is not working. So we need to determine what that is. So we're going to take this board out of here. Yep. That's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm reluctant, but I don't think I have any other choice. So hold on a second. Let's take this off. So this is what the sound is coming from on the headphone jack. So I wonder if this is what's controlling the sound. It, you know, it's worth a shot because it's such an easy thing to get to. Let's just try it. I have another one. I'm going to swap it out. Okay. Um, so I'm a little bit, I, maybe not because So this is what the game reader is in. This is the game reader. This isn't necessarily what's controlling the sound. You know, let's let's just try it for the sake of of ruling it out, right? Um, I don't think it can hurt. Another thing I'm going to do before I continue, I'm going to pop the battery just because you don't want to short anything any further. You don't want to cause any further damage. Um, so yeah, let's continue on with this. We'll pull this guy out. Seven. Seven Y O eight B. I am willing to bet this is a much older council. Let's see. Serial number. This council doesn't have a serial number. Okay.
Well, that's mildly concerning that this doesn't have a serial number. That makes me think that it was maybe stolen or something. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the in the comments. Hopefully, I can like register the device and like sell it and whatnot. I didn't even notice that. You know, that's my mistake. I I should have noticed that before I had purchased it. That's kind of a stupid mistake to make. I feel like maybe not. I don't. I don't know. We will certainly find out, won't we? At this point, what do I have to lose? A couple hundred bucks. Oh well. Alright, in the off chance that did something, let's give it a shot. <clears throat> okay, well, that's great. Now the touch screen doesn't work. I would have to assume it's because of something that I just did. Let's try it again. Let's hope it works. The touch screen, that is. And while that's booting up, I'm an idiot. I have this board. Let me just look at this to understand where the sound connects to. Okay. Touchscreen works. So now we know this board is important for touchscreen things, touchscreen related things. It must be uh, related to the serial serial number in some some way. Maybe maybe not. I don't know. Okay. So. Here's where our audio ports are. They're right here, right here. Let's flip them. Let's understand where we're at here. So that's our audio input. Right there. Frook, 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 frook. So it looks like it goes to there, yeah goes to here. That's where the pins go for the audio. Um, let me just try a little continuity test here. Let's see what we got. So one of these should go, I would expect one to go to ground, right? find out. Okay, maybe not. What do we got? Okay, so that's a resistor. I, b I believe that's a resistor of some sort, so I would expect that to have short to ground on both sides, but how does this work? So comes through it's just a high and a low signal and then it's sending voltage to it at different frequencies it's not like it's can controlled so this one's a little bit easier to understand it goes here and then it comes to this here All right directly on the other side of this is this bit here Let's hope that that's not what controls the sound. That's going to be a tough one to to try and desolder. Now, you know, it's it's worth noting the reason the touch screen didn't work was maybe not necessarily related directly to this. Um, I might not have had this connected properly. I believe these headphones will play sound through the USB. Let's try. Yes, it does. You can't hear it, but it does. Okay. Um, so that to me, another good sign. It does play when docked, I would assume when it's docked because it's playing through the USB, right? 
USB is how this thing is going to cast. Unplugging each of the speakers. Maybe, maybe there's something internally wrong with one of the speakers that's making the whole sound chip short. It's a long shot, but before I pull it all apart, nothing. So unfortunately I had the camera off when I did this, but what I did was I took the one from the previous that I destroyed the board on, um, that I didn't know if the screen worked, it does. And if I didn't, I didn't know if the sound worked. Well, I used the battery from the known working console because the one in this apparently does not hold a charge. I'll have to let it sit on the charger for a while and see if I can get it to take a charge. But I plugged it in, put the board in this, in this device here and look at that. The sound works. So what does that tell me? Well, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I would imagine that it just means that these aren't, these speakers don't work for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not really sure. Like I've never really, uh, <clears throat> seen speakers go bad, but, um, maybe I'll do some testing on them and understand what the deal is with them. Because if that's the case, I'm just going to take, well, take this board, pull these speakers out of it and be done with it. I mean, that makes sense to me. So, um, yeah, so the, the rest of this video is just going to be me reassembling it and, and then playing with a switch because I've never played with a switch before.
back together, we're charging. If I put the meter on here, this is an interesting one. Um, I'll put it on the red outside, black outside, those are positive, negative. We're at almost 3.4 volts. Go to the inside too, 3.4 volts. Um, that battery over there is at 3.7. So the threshold is a little bit fuzzy to me where it's going to turn on. But you can see I press the power button, she turns off. Oh, there it is. All right, so now we're charging at 1.43 amps, but it's saying that it does not like it. There it is. So I don't know if you can see that, 1.43 amps. So we're charging at the high rate now. That's great. That means this battery is going to recover. Ah, there you go. We're at 3.6. We recovered it. It's great. Well, I'm going to finish assembling this. There you go. That's it. It's back together. It's working good. I'm going to cut it there. I think the next one I'm going to do is going to be um, trying to fix the Joy Cons. And one of them, this one here, moves to the right constantly. This one, the button is a little sticky. Um, but <clears throat> for now, it appears that we've fixed this one. So, um, or not. Spoke too soon. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. Alright, we're going to cut it there. Thanks for watching.